Welcome to the Ten Acre Woods. My name's Mark, and today we're going to talk about ducks. Who are you? Don't mind me. I'm just a hired help. No, carry on. I'll just keep doing what I was doing. Alright. <laughs> just let him get back to what he was doing. <laughs> so, ducks. Uh, we had some, of course, a couple videos ago. We talked about hatching out some ducks. Ducks are sitting. Some of them still are. Uh, but the batch that came, uh, or that was sitting underneath the steps just over there, uh, they hatched. And it's very interesting because you can kind of see the whole process. Uh, it started out on Thursday where the, uh, the, the moms were taking turns with the little ones. And it was very interesting to see the, the, the changing or the rotating of the eggs. Um, so from what I understand, the beaks are very sensitive to temperature and they can tell the temperature uh, of how the, uh, how the ducks or the duck eggs are doing. Uh, so they would rotate them regularly. I went through the video and counted numerous times where they got underneath each other. Uh, it was interesting because there were two of them sharing the workload. Uh, so the first one hatched out, I'm going to say probably about 1 o'clock on the Thursday. Uh, and then I scrolled through the footage and uh, not another one for that whole day. So later on, uh, the next morning, we started getting the hatching. All the other ones started popping out. Uh, the little chirping started going on. Uh, and of course, when I got home from work on Friday, I checked the footage and sure enough, uh, there they were. I first only saw two, but then started to notice more and more and more. Uh, so this morning, Saturday morning, the um, one of the ducks, one of the moms, was sitting outside. It was raining and she was sheltering the little ones underneath her. So Tara came out and she noticed this uh, and she went over and she looked and of course there was one that got left behind. Uh, so going through the footage, uh, I could see that the the uh, Harlequin mom, the light-colored mom, she kind of got up, had something to drink, eat, and then wandered out. All of the little ducklings, except for the one, uh, just stayed behind. And the dark Rowan mom, uh, she went and sat down for about half an hour until I think she figured enough was enough and she went out and the poor little one was, uh, was left behind. So Tara went and checked the nest, grabbed this big hand, comes in and, and scoops up the last one uh, and she put them all in the nursery. So you may have noticed that at the end of the montage, I put in uh, the little turkey chick, uh, or pullet as they're called. Uh, when they get older, the females are called a jenny, uh, and then of course when they are adult, the tom turkey, male turkey, uh, is either called a tom or a gobbler, and the female is a hen. Uh, so quite a few names to remember as the, uh, the turkeys go from the pullet stage up to the uh, tom or the hen stage. So getting back to the ducks, uh, I want to go over, before we go in and we see the little ones, I just want to go over, here's daddy. So this is a rowan. You might uh, think, oh, it looks like a, a, a mallard. Uh, but no, it's a lot larger than a mallard. And on the back end, it's a little hard to see there, but there is a little curly tail. Sometimes the curly tail falls off. Uh, but that is called a drake feather. 
And if you listen, you can hear him wah, wah, wah. So they don't quack. The males actually have uh, kind of a wah, wah, wah. <laughs> the females will quack. This is a female here. Uh, this is a cross. Actually, that might even be a Cayuga or a Cayuga cross. Uh, we did get some Cayuga ducks, but that's a female. You can see she's kind of walking in a submissive uh, down. Her head's kind of more down. She's actually just looking for food. <laughs> and the male is keeping an eye on things, uh, just making sure that his girl is safe. Now, what else do we have over here? So we've got a few other ones. So this is another trio, and these are a mixture. Uh, so the, the closer one here, the brown one, uh, this is actually a Rowan cross, which you can see the brown, mostly brown, but there's a lot of spotting patterns in there as well. Uh, the male that's in the back, uh, and I can't quite see a drake feather on him. Sometimes it's very pronounced and it just curls right up, uh, but you can hear his wah wah. <laughs> We'll just call it a wah wah instead of a quack quack. Uh, and then the other female that's over there is another cross. And those are the ducks that are hanging out up front, with the exception of the other ones that are still sitting. And by the other ones that I mean that are still sitting, there is one that is sitting. Yeah, she's still in there and she's a, uh, she's a cross. I don't want to disturb her too much, but she's in there. Uh, and the nest that hatched out yesterday, they were underneath the stairs. There's another Muscovy that's back in further. We'll talk about incubation or gestation period in a second here. Uh, we'll just check on. Oh, there's one of the chips. <laughs> uh, and da -da 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 -da. yep, she's in there. So this one here uh, might be a little tough to see. Let's see if we can get a better view. Uh, so this one is called a Harlequin duck uh, and we've named her Harley of course. <laughs> so she's sitting on another egg. She's probably, or another nest anyway, uh, she's probably about uh, two weeks behind the other nest so we probably won't see anything uh, for a little bit. Coming in towards the nursery we have Sheldon and Moira. Uh, and what we've noticed, Moira actually came in, she's a Shetland sheep, she came in with um, kind of an eye infection and we managed to get that under control, but unfortunately it looks like she is starting to go blind. Uh, so her one eye is on the right side there, you can see how it squinted a little bit, uh, but it's starting to go a little hazy. So we're gonna see how she makes out. Uh, but it could have been, I guess the infection may have gone on a little bit too long before it was actually caught. Uh, but we, um, we noticed that when she came in and we, uh, we treated her and, and it, uh, it worked very well. Marley, which is probably out back, Marley's one of the alpacas, he had kind of the same kind of thing going on. Uh, so we actually had some cream to put on him uh, and we, uh, we had it on hand so we put it on her. Uh, so we're going to keep an eye on her, see how she makes out, and, and hopefully she doesn't lose complete loss of vision. Uh, but uh, she seems to be doing pretty good with people around. Now inside here we have... No Sheldon. Sheldon likes to try to sneak in. You stay out. Uh, we've got this little hoop that we just kind of put over there. It makes it e easy for locking. Uh, but he tends to, uh, and I forget every time, and of course I walk in and I feel something brush across my leg, and sure enough, there's Sheldon. All right, so here we go. Uh, so we've got another chipmunk over behind the water container. Here, getting all the little uh, grains, and here are all the little ones. So I haven't counted them. Uh, Tara says there's 16 of them. So I'll take her word for it. And they tend to, uh, they tend to migrate towards the Rowan mom, which is the brown one. Uh, the other one, it's kind of a Harlequin cross, we're thinking. The contrast in the feathers on her isn't as sharp as Harley, uh, but it's, uh, it's a, it appears to be a cross, likely a Harlequin cross. Uh, 
So one of them in there is three days old, or almost three days old, and the other two, the other ones are all two days old. Uh, so they're going to look for the protection of mom. They're going to be, uh, when we're out here, we're going to see them wandering around and, and biting at little bugs and such. Uh, so they're, uh, they're at a very cute stage. Now with water, so there is no pond in here. We may put a shallow pond in. We've just got these watering areas here. We want to make sure that the ducklings don't fall into a water container and can't get out. Now at this age, since they don't have any feathers, it's just all that fluff, they, um, they're kind of protected by mom. So if there was a duckling that fell into water, you would think, you might think, uh, well, it's fine because it's a duck, right? Uh, but no, uh, they'll develop their feathers, which will keep them dry. The fluff actually absorbs water after a period of time. Uh, so ducklings can only stay in the water for a short amount of time until they start to get saturated. So our dogs, and it was cute from the montage how the West Highland Terriers, Maggie in the front and Toby in the middle there, uh, they were behaving themselves, probably because I was standing there recording them. Um, but if, any, if you know about West Highland Terriers, they are rodent killers. Uh, any little thing that moves, they are on it. Uh, they're not a retriever, they are fight until death. <laughs> so uh, it's essential that uh, no birds or uh, especially chipmunks. They go crazy when they see the chipmunks uh, running along just outside the fence line and they start whining. And then there's Atlas. Atlas. Hi Atlas. <laughs> now uh, I did a video on Facebook. I guess I should share it with my YouTube audience. Uh, now we've got a, a few cameras and one of them's up there. So this area here, we regularly have the animals come in and they trim it down. And well, Barry was in and Barry our alpaca didn't want to go out. And I figured, well, I'm going to go down with my herd dog and uh, we're, we're going to work on him and see how he does. So I'm telling him to, let's go, come on Atlas, you know, I'm giving him the signals and he's barking and then <laughs> Barry runs at him. And uh, well, it didn't work out. So Barry was the herding animal and uh, Atlas is kind of a scaredy cat in that situation. Uh, so it was pretty comical. So our turkey hen over here is very protective. She only has one <laughs> to look after, but she is extremely protective. So she's a very good mom. So talking about gestation period, geese have a, or sorry, uh, turkeys have a uh, gestation or an incubation period of uh, 28 days and that is the same for ducks so your Pekin ducks your harlequin ducks your uh, your rowan ducks uh, all 28 day cycle uh, guineas i don't see any guineas around they're probably in the bush somewhere they've got the gestation or incubation period of 26 days uh, and geese are 35 days with chickens being 21 days uh, so all kinds of different numbers in there um, something very interesting is we do have a goose that was sitting and we'll see her in a minute We'll have to go check in on her uh, So Tara comes out this morning and she sees there is a Chinese goose sitting and she's being very protective Head down uh, as if she's hiding uh, Maybe a little bit of hissing. I'm, I wasn't out there. I'm not quite sure But I can understand what she would have come across and she thought I've got some goose eggs that uh, like we were thinking about, oh, do we incubate them? We, do, we don't want to start up our huge incubator. So the opportunity came up where she said, I'm going to take these and I'm going to put it underneath, uh, put them underneath her. And sure enough, she started pulling the eggs in. So she just put them kind of around the nest and she pulled them on. Well, when she got up, she was sitting on a rock. And that happens quite often. Uh, the crows have been getting the, uh, the eggs, so they haven't been able to, uh, to sit on any of them. But when we do see them, we had been kind of collecting them. Uh, so, so that was good. Uh, Fernando, did you see your little baby? Hey. Oh, you trying to impress her, are you? <laughs> I think you had your shot, buddy. Some questions I've been getting on the comments, they're all great questions. 
uh, we should get a donkey. So we have had uh, numerous donkeys in the past and I've actually done uh, an episode on that, uh, horses and donkeys of the Ten Acre Woods, uh, and also uh, many other ones like uh, goat hoof trimming, which we should actually do another one. Uh, so I'm going to plan maybe going over the uh, the hoofs of the goats, uh, and uh, well, the sheep were done already when they got sheared, uh, so they're pretty good. And we've got our farrier coming out within uh, the next few weeks, and she's going to be checking in on our ponies and whatnot. And she actually also does the alpacas uh, because the alpacas are a little bit more of a challenge. Uh, it takes a few people to uh, to wrangle them, and, uh, and they're just so, so high strung. So we want to make sure, of course, that it's a it's as pleasant uh, a, a, a situation as possible. And um, and well, it's it's got to be done. So <laughs> we gotta we gotta get it done now. Uh, Muscovy. So here's a Muscovy here. This is a Muscovy Drake. Uh, they do not have Drake feathers, but they are quite a bit larger than the females. This is one of the high guys, and their mask is usually quite a bit larger. It encompasses their whole face, uh, where the females usually it's just kind of a mask around uh, around their eyes. Oh, Fernando, you just gotta get in there, don't you, bud? <laughs> Uh, now, where are we at here? Ducks, ducks, ducks. No, there's a goose. There's a few geese here. So we've got, these are, all three of these are Czech geese. And there's a Czech, Czech, Czech. And there's a Pekin actually over here. I don't even know where all the Chinese geese are. But here is one of our, I think that's the only Pekin we have left, if I recall correctly. Uh, and this one here is, uh, I believe it's a male. Yeah, so this is a male. You can tell by the thickness of the neck. Uh, and it's got a slight drake feather. So, oh, and the quack. So there's the drake feather. You can clearly see there. And he has kind of a wah wah about him. So he's hanging out with his own color. <laughs> I guess he figures, well, I'll just be one of the geese. Uh, and here is, I believe this is, this is either Sam or Hunter. I believe it's Sam. Uh, and he is a Muscovy. And they got this, uh, <laughs> the afro that goes up, or the, uh, the spiked hairdo. The punk rock do. Hey, bud? <laughs> uh, now the female, oh, no, okay, over, I was thinking this was the one where the goose was in, but uh, no, I was wrong. The female Muscovies, uh, they actually don't quack either. So they've got kind of a little tweet about them. Oh, there she is. Is she going to get uh, get a little defensive? Let's see. Yeah, see, the head goes down. I don't know if you can see that. Let's just tilt. There we go. See, the head's down, and she's kind of like, well... You know, I'm hiding and you can't see me. <laughs> so Tara has gone and piled up uh, all this stuff here, branches and things, uh, just so that she's sheltered a little bit more uh, because, of course, crows in the area. She's likely not going to get up too often, but she will want to get up to, of course, go get something to eat and go get a drink. And at that time, we don't want the eggs exposed uh, or the little ones um, or the eggs, I guess they're not little ones quite yet. Uh, the eggs will be exposed and uh, the crow may see them. So these boys, you know, they behave, they behave most of the time, but sometimes, you know, they got that little pecking order and they just got to give a, a little jab to, uh, to one of them to make sure that uh, they know who is in the pecking order. Uh, so last uh, last week I showed you this area here. It seems to be growing up very nicely. Uh, there's quite a bit of grass coming up in here, so that's great. So I think what we're going to do is we're going to put uh, one of the goats or a couple of the goats, maybe a sheep in here, uh, and they can trim down all those uh, seedlings as well, uh, give it a nice mow, and then we'll kick them back out so that it gets a chance to uh, to carry on and uh, and grow nice and thick. Okay, uh, let's check. I see there's some goats here. There's some sheep. We'll do a little... Uh, well, there's not much of an update on these guys. Coco? Oh, did I startle you? <laughs> Hi, Coco. <laughs> what are you guys doing in there? All the rest of them out back? Oh, no, maybe not. There's snow over here. And... 
I see two. I only see two of the kids. Oh, three of the kids. Yeah, so those two are, that looks like Spock and, uh, and Scotty. <laughs> Scotty and, no, that's not Spock. That, Spock has uh, more of a, more of a darker face, doesn't he? <laughs> yes. So there's three goats here, and I was trying to figure out who was missing. Uh, so it looks like Nimoy did, is missing, which is uh, a little brown, or no, sorry, brown, black, kind of grayish, black, white. Uh, tips. So Nemoid must be out back with uh, with the other ones and the other three are up here with their moms. Uh, it quite often happens, you know, kids go out and play and uh, they don't keep track of, uh, of where their mom is uh, until they want something to eat. And then you'll hear the bush uh, come alive of crying. <laughs> so it's like, well, come and get your mom. Uh, okay, so Muscovy duck. So we haven't seen a female Muscovy. There is one underneath the front porch, and we've got two. Uh, the other one is actually underneath this here. So we're not gonna get a, a very clear shot of her. Oh, she's in there. There we go, there she is. So you can see the mask is kind of around her, uh, her eyes there. And uh, gestation, as I was mentioning on these Muscovies, is 35 days. So she didn't start sitting for a little while, so she's probably got another two to three weeks, I'm guessing. I'm not sure how many eggs she has under there. This has been here for, I'm not sure how long we put this in the ground as a nest box. The other half of it is actually right there. The rabbits are using it. Uh, and it is a, uh, a captain's bed. And the two halves go together. And these are the drawers that go out and you pull out on the side. So we had this and we figured, well, let's just pull the drawers out and we'll kind of dig it into the ground here, which has worked great, uh, probably because of the sandy soil here. It's not rotting, so it dries, uh, it dries out, doesn't, the ground doesn't hold its moisture very well. Look who I found lounging. Petey and Piper. <laughs> what, did you hear, did you hear your name? Petey, oh. What is it? Are you guys having a little nap? Oh, it's nice to be outside and sleeping. Sleep under the stars? Yeah, that's a great bread you got there. Uh, now these guys are pot-bellied pigs. That was actually another question that I had is, uh, can you do a video on micro pigs? So these are considered micro pigs, yet uh, they are quite large. Uh, you would think a micro pig would fit in your purse. Well, when they're babies, they can. Uh, I have done actually two videos on pigs, on, on talking about micro pigs. And the dogs, like Toby behind me, barking. There is something about pigs, is there, Toby? No. You just leave them alone. They're sleeping. It's the funniest thing because the dogs will run up along the fence with the pigs right, right next to the fence. And they'll be barking, barking, barking. And the pigs just don't care. Look at them. Do you think they care? <laughs> no. So how long do geese and ducks live for? Uh, that's probably going to be one of the questions you're asking. Uh, domestic ducks can normally live anywhere from 10 to 15 years, uh, providing they have good care. Uh, mallards in the wild can live six to eight years. Of course, they've got more of a predatorial problem out in the wild. Uh, geese, probably anywhere, I would say, from 15 to 20 years. Uh, I think the oldest one, or one of the older ones that I remember reading about, was about 24 years for a, a goose. Uh, so that's uh, kind of the age. I think we went over all of the ducks that are here. Uh, I don't believe I missed anybody out. I was just coming back here to see if I could see the other animals, the goats, the alpacas, and the horses. Uh, and I don't really feel like walking into the bush. Uh, just, I don't know, maybe I'm just lazy today. So I am going to call them because that works wonders. Uh, once you have your animals trained, come on, mamas! You can call them in. Now, uh, calling them in, oh, I hear something going on over over there yeah once uh, once you have them trained and the way we train them is when you call them in you give them some oats we don't always give them oats uh, but uh, they associate 
coming in and listening as, uh, as treat time. So sheep are usually followers uh, and they'll follow the goats around. Now I'm not sure if, uh, that looks like Lambert there, not sure if Lambert is actually reacting to me calling them in or if he's just following the goats. <laughs> but there's the rest of the kids. <laughs> and there's Nemoid in the, in the back there following up the rear. Uh, but the, yeah, see he's looking for his mom. He's like, uh, I didn't see my mom come in. Nemoid, your mom's already up there. <laughs> oh, silly little boy. Uh, okay, now, all right, I see some other action coming through. Looks like the alpacas. Hi, Paula. And his, her son, Marley. Hey, guys. Where's the rest of the crew? Looks like I see Willow back. But no, that's an alpaca as well. Okay. Okay, well, I don't know where the horses are. All right, so there's the alpaca. One, two, three. That looks like Shanzi. Usually Barry is off wandering. Yeah, that's uh, Shanzi. So that's uh, one of the girls. Uh, now the, uh, well, I guess we're going to have to get the ponies in the next video unless they, uh, they show up here right away. Here are the guineas. I did see them earlier. Uh, we have some that are missing, of course. And uh, they're likely in the bush, uh, sitting on some eggs. Now, we do live uh, right on the highway here, and there has been some construction going on. Uh, and we've had numerous people tell us that our guineas are going across the highway. Uh, so they do tend to come back. I haven't seen any that have been hit, so that's good. So they're likely still out there. Uh, they're not the brightest, but with the construction going on, uh, the vehicles are moving a little slower in this area. And how's my boys? Hey? Hi, how's my boys? Carl, Billy, and Bobby. You guys getting into trouble? Mom was telling me that you were getting into trouble. Yes, they've been, well, of course, you can see from his, his horn, <laughs> it's broken, isn't it? Now I hear you've been hitting the tree. Let's see, these beautiful Manitoba maple trees. And look what he is doing. I'm sure Billy is, uh, I'm sure Billy's to blame. Wow, that train's pretty loud. Uh, but look at that. So the bark is ripped right off around. Uh, this one's actually not so bad. I was actually going to cut off a section of this because, well, I think I planted it a little bit too close to the yard light. <laughs> so we're not getting any light past this tree. Uh, I talked about the rhubarb plant a couple weeks ago and how it was growing up and I wasn't sure what we were going to do with it, but apparently we are going to let it go to seed. So I was mentioning that uh, these are now the seed seeds you can actually see on there. So we'll wait until they dry out uh, and we want to keep an eye on them uh, to, to harvest them at the right time once they're dry enough uh, that they don't fall off on their own. So I wasn't sure what we were going to do with it, but if you want your rhubarb plant to go to seed, then uh, don't harvest that, don't break it off, and leave your plant intact. Uh, if, you, uh, if you're not worried about that and you have lots of seeds, then snap off all those stems that come up that are seeding, uh, because then it'll put all of its energy into the, uh, into the rest of it, and uh, it'll grow up and you'll have lots of rhubarb. So I think that's it for the ducks. The only thing that I didn't mention is what we feed them. Uh, so you can buy when you're starting out, uh, when like we did, uh, we bought a granular duck feed uh, and it's a processed duck food. Now, as we went and moved on, we started dealing with some grains and playing around with different grains, making sure that they had enough of the proteins and enough of the calcium and, and all those essential nutrients that they need. Uh, so we've now switched over and we're feeding them a mixture of barley, wheat, and oats. Uh, and of course, in the pond, so if you have a pond that's available on your property where you're planning on getting ducks, 
Uh, there's lots of bugs and things out there. Uh, quite often we will see the, uh, the geese and the ducks with their bums up in the air uh, and they're stretching down to the bottom uh, and pulling off any kind of uh, material that's down there or hunting for little bugs and such. Uh, now, uh, speaking of plants and such, I uh, just thought I'd do a quick little walk through the garden. Uh, these are the potatoes which uh, Tara had been told that she needs to keep adding dirt in here. But it's starting to get a little busy. <laughs> so she has been uh, adding some, some dirt as she's gone along. And you can see it's right up to the, uh, the straw bale. Um, so things are growing up. Uh, this here are the, these are the... Um, uh, sorry, the B, the, what are they? The snow peas. That's what they are. I just have to read this little stick sticking out of the ground. These are the peas. Now, of course, the whole idea is for them to grow up and attach onto here. She may need to actually take some more of that stucco wire that we've got to keep the animals out from underneath. Uh, and she may need to kind of run that up further. Uh, but it's, of course, making it from there to there. It, it could be part of the problem. But this is the first year. Uh, so, you know, we're going to live and learn here. Uh, you can see the little round pellets in there. So there's some alpaca and I believe some rabbit poop that's in there, possibly even some goat poop. Uh, so we've got that as a bed. We'll see how that goes. Uh, but things seem to be doing well. We had a problem earlier on in the year with frost and a lot of people had, uh, they'd lost a whole bunch of their garden. Um, so everything seems to be uh, doing fine. There was some hot peppers that I believe are down here somewhere. She actually went out and bought some. And it looks like these are bought. Yeah, hot Portugal pepper. And so look at that. Look at, look at our growing. We're doing great in the garden, although we bought these ones. <laughs> So that is it for this video. Uh, it is Canada Day weekend here uh, in Manitoba, Canada, and of course in the States is Independence Day. I'm not sure it's the 29th today. I don't know if you guys are celebrating your Independence Day this weekend or next weekend. Uh, but anywho, uh, happy Independence Day to you down there. Uh, so that's it for this video. Uh, I think I covered everything uh, about ducks, but if I didn't, uh, please put a comment down below and ask your questions. And until next video, have a wonderful week. Take care. Bye-bye.